In this video I'm going to be working on this Atzelia, which I just bought uh, a couple of months ago. I just wanted it to let I just wanted to let it flower first because they're so beautiful. So and it's an okay time to repot them after after the flowering. So that's what I'm going to do today. Typically the Atzelias is a lot of different um, plants put together to get get the plant as bushy as possible and get as many flowers, but in bonsai you don't want this. So when I start removing the soil around the trunks, I might find a lot of trees, which is nice. Sometimes five, up to five, and sometimes you're actually lucky to have one and then get a very thick trunk. Um, both are good. You, either you get a lot of trees or either you get a really thick trunk. Um, we're just gonna see um, what we get. Uh, and I want to make a lot of cuttings because now I have this rooting hormone and supposedly I've heard that azaleas are very easy to make cuttings from uh, if you put them in the shade. Even pretty thick branches you can do it from. So I'm going to try that as well. I'm going to make just a big pot. I found this old washing up bowl or whatever you'd call it. Um, and I'm going to put them all in there to just promote, promote further growth um, and slowly turn them into bonsai trees and one day put them in an ice pot. Um, but I'm going to make the bowl first because it's it's a broken pot so I need to cut it in a bit to prepare it. So we're just going to put this to the side and work on the pot first. Which is this oval container. And I do apologize for the dog in the background. It's very annoying but what can you do? And I really love finding like old plastic containers and pots and using them instead of buying new ones. Both because it's cheap for the hobby. We don't have a big income right now as we just moved to another country. And the other fact is that it's good for the environment to not always just produce, pr produce new stuff. Also, it's, it's, it's the same fact with actual, actual bonsai pots. It's, the really exclusive ones are the very old vintage ones that's been used or some of them has scars. There's more prestige in those who has a history. And I, get, I really like that fact. Although I wouldn't dare to compare this old plastic container to a bonsai pot, but I like reusing stuff. Oops. Need my drill and make some holes in it. A lot of holes. Drainage is very, very important in both sides. Always remember that. Try to collect most of the plastic so we don't get that out in nature. So I'm gonna make the soil now, and this is just some soil out from the, from the mountain. It's just I don't want to wait, waste the expensive bonsai soil when I'm just doing my free bonsai um, because I don't know if they'll survive the recording and when they have such a big root ball it's not important to have the good bonsai soil. So I'm just going to use this and some speck and moss and of course some acid soil because Azaleas and rhododendrons they really seem they really like acid soil. So. The thing to be very uh, aware of when you're doing work on the roots of an azalea is these fine, fine roots. They are very easy to da damage, so you want to be very careful when working on upon them, um, which I am also going to try to be as gentle as possible. And I learned from 
notion bonsai and another bonsai channel much bigger and much better than mine that it's very nice to have a um, a little bit of water spray to spray upon the roofs when they get dry but just watered it this morning so maybe it won't be necessary and i'm in the shade but it's good to have in handy so they don't dry out while, while they're out of the the ground it's gonna start from the top removing the soil and then it's always a good principle to pull out away from the tree not like this from the sides there's a lot the chances of breaking the roots are a lot higher if you do it this way so always away from the trunk and the tree like so it's gonna be exciting to see how many trunks we got underneath here roots look very fine again i need to apologize for the dog it's always back much you can do about it sometimes i think it's my voice that it can hear and then starts barking because it, the problem with this dog is it doesn't get enough attention i'm sorry it's, i know it's a butterfly channel and not a dog channel but it's very frustrating for us when you're sitting in your garden it's just a dog barking constantly it's definitely not one trunk it's gonna go all the way around Let's see what we've got a lot of fertilizer down here I'll probably use that again when i do the repotting Maybe I'll just use this in the in the soil again because it's probably very acid and there's all this fertilizer. Don't want that to go to waste. It's not dissolved at all. And again, as I said, it doesn't hurt when they're not going in a small container. Uh, they're not going in an actual bonsai pot as of yet. So I can be a little less picky with the soil. It doesn't need to be perfect with all the akadama and lava soil maybe i'll put a little pumice in it so it has proper drainage but other than that don't want to waste any akadama on it yet and on the bottom it's the same principle always pull away from the tree not not from the sides looks to have very fine roots i'm very happy with it just gonna remove some of the branches so I can see what I'm actually working on here. And that's the good thing about it, Salias. They are very heavy to butt back. They do it even though you don't prune them. They butt back all the time. And that's why it's an amazing species to work with because you don't have, if you make a bad decision or something you don't like with the design, you can always cut it back and start over. And a very very nice feature in a species that's why acelia is such a popular species to turn into a bonsai and of course also the flowers i just love them they're so beautiful and the plan is with this channel and all the trees i'm working on that you'll be able to follow them so I'll I'll make a follow-up video on this group I'm making of pre at Celia Bonsai and you'll be able to see the development. Will they, say, will they survive and how is the cuttings gonna do and follow the process of me turning these trees hopefully one day into material which you could use in an exhibition. But that's a long way, but um, that's what I'm striving at to do. They are really stuck together. More teasing, I guess. The problem is they, when you put three of them together, they roots, they really grow together. Which is why they are very hard to take apart. Sounds very drastic, but sometimes there's nothing else to do. Let's do some more teasing. Seems to be one big one and then one and then two smaller ones. But they are really, really, really stuck together. Another issue is that the nebari uh, of the trees are gonna be pretty much one-sided because 
you're pretty much ruining all the roots on one side of your, your tree here because they're stuck together. See, I'm, I think I'm clo close to getting them apart, but I've lost a lot of roots. There we go. So this is the big one. No, I think this is actually might be two as well, right? Yes, this is two also. Oh, this is the two, I'm sorry. And then there's the one big one. See if we can get this apart. See, there's a lot of roots lost here. And take them apart. This one almost has no roots. I actually think I made a mistake here because this was probably just one tree. That is not so good. I think I have to take all of this off because it will need to supply very little foliage because I've been so tough on it. Not much, not much wiggle room here, I think. Very tiny, but if you only have two small roots that's been treated very toughly at the moment, I think the best option is to remove as much foliage as you can to promote the chances of survival here. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with this one. But here, there's plenty of roots, and this is where, right here is where the other one broke off. I don't know if it was an actual branch or this was just very intertwined, so I couldn't get them together. But here you have plenty of roots, two big trunks, so I'll have to choose one or make it a two trunk tree. I'll decide on that in a bit. Putting them on the side in this water to just let the roots stray moist and help them not die. See this root right here is very far up the trunk and the Yamado and the Nibari is starting down here so I'm gonna take this one off. This one is too close to the ground in my opinion so I'm gonna take this one off as well. And this side of the trunk is where I was very tough on the tree so I think I might as well cut it off, just hope for for survival here. This one is the of the three is the one with the most roots. So I can think I think it's actually okay to prune them a bit. You want the roots to grow to the sides and one side to make a cool divari and a beautiful nebari, so I can actually prune the roots for the ones going down, straight down. Don't want those. Up here we have a problem uh, on a synergy on, of the trunk because it's a lot thicker up here than it is down uh, close to the nibari so in the future I need to cut off these two branches. They don't really serve any purpose either and they're just lanky long shoots up into the air so I need to remove them but um, on the other hand, I, I'm afraid to cut them off uh, at the trunk because it will be too much uh, for the Azalea to heal. Uh, although they are very good at closing their own scars, um, I'm afraid too many of them will lessen the chances of survival. So I'm just gonna take them off far up, like so. And a good word of advice, especially when you are uh, splitting uh, an azalea from a uh, from a gardening center you really you really want to leave as little foliage when you're this tough on the roots you really want to leave as as little foliage on as possible because then the roots don't have to supply as much energy and food for uh, for too much foliage so i'm gonna prune off a lot to hopefully make the the tree survive and I'm not gonna do any wiring in this in this video. I really want to wait because I don't want to tease the tease the tree too much. And the beautiful thing about bonsai, it's never done. So if you feel like you make a mistake now, you can always, especially with azaleas, as I told before, you can always just let it grow out a new branch if you're not satisfied with your leader or if you're not satisfied with it or that, this or that. There's a lot of chances, especially in in a tree that's, that is uh, happy to butt back, like Azaleas. So 
I'm gonna leave all these on because I'm afraid to make too many scars on the trunk and it won't be able to heal it. I think this is it for now. And with this one I'm a bit conflicted. Same problem as before, I did a lot of damage when splitting them apart. Um, don't know if this is gonna be a two trunk uh, tree or what it is gonna be. I'm just gonna use the same principle and the last as on the last tree I have roof a lot of foliage so there's not too much foliage to supply for the roots. That's it. And then I have a lot of thin branches as options to do further work when it's when it's ready. Once they've been able to recover from the repotting and the tough tough pruning. I'm gonna add some lava stones here. This volcanic soil is to make the drainage better in the soil, so I'm gonna mix this in as well. Azaleas are as acidic as, as themselves. I've heard that if you put all the leaves and all the dead flowers back in the soil, it's supposedly gonna make it even more acidic, which is what you want with these trees. And here we have the acidic soil, just all-purpose acidic soil for trees and bushes that needs acidic soil. And then a bit of clay, burnt clay here. It's not Akadama, it's too big. Big gra uh, the grains are too big to be Akadama and it's very tough. It doesn't break down in the, in the ground as Akadama does. And I'm always experimenting with different types of soil to find the best one for me because I I like experimenting and finding out what the trees like and expanding my knowledge in this amazing hobby of bonsai. I think it, this is pretty good. I want to put some spectrum moss in it as well. This seems to be one of the things that every YouTuber and every bonsai expert, expert can uh, agree upon is the spectrum moss is just a fantastic thing in bonsai, both to keep the moist and all the nourishment that comes as it breaks down and root development and yeah, the list is very long of the benefits with sphagnum moss. So I'm adding this and I'm very happy that I found a place where I can just pick it up down here on our mountain. It's within walking distance, I really like that. I also like to use the um, sphagnum moss in the bottom if you don't for example, if you don't have mesh to put all the holes, the sphagnum moss can also act as a um, as a blockage, so the um, the soil won't run out. During the recording, I like to make a little pile here, and then I like to push it down while turning it so the roots so the soil gets up between the roots soil on top right now i am stuffing the soil in between the roots so that there's no air pockets and the tree has the best growing conditions and right now it seems like i'm creating the same problem i had once i was uh, one uh, right now it seems like i'm creating the same problem i had just moments ago when I split the three trunks from each other, the three uh, Azalea trees, but I have a lot more distance between them right here, which is going to make it a lot easier to split them from each other when I want to do actual bonsai trees of them.